Okay, welcome back to the channel, everybody. Right as I start this video, we're getting some raindrops. That is not a good sign, but we're gonna try and start planting soybeans today. I've got the 8110 ready to go, the seed tender ready to go, and we are gonna try and get some beans in the ground. I'm gonna grab my digger quick. Now today is April 24th. I really would have loved to get these beans in like April, you know, 13th, 14th when we were planting corn. I just didn't have enough time to get them, get them in then. So we got a rain coming tonight um, and conditions aren't the best. There's about 10 acres of this that is unworked and didn't get burned in a fire. Go check out like one of my past videos to explain that a little bit. But uh, that's the stuff that's wet. Um, everything else is ready to go on here. It's about 30 acres total. So, this is corn we planted April, what would have been? April 14th? April 13th? April 13th. So, I should stick my thermometer in the ground to really see, but um, this stuff is not coming along much because it's been cool. We've gotten really good moisture and we planted in good conditions. Soil temps were great then, but things have kind of turned turned worse. Um, so there it is. I scalped the seed a little bit, but it's still pretty deep. It hasn't, I'm gonna break something off here. Yeah, we have not had many GDUs, which is growing degree units. Um, so it's been, it's been tough for this little guy, but it's gonna get warm the next three days and then next week's supposed to get really warm. So this should be coming out of the ground later next week, I think. Guys have forecasts where they can just predict, you know, what time their corn's gonna come out of the ground based on how many GDUs they've gotten. So I bet you they could tell you what day it's uh, gonna come out of the ground, most likely. So I'm gonna grab out my thermometer. We're gonna stick this in the ground and see what our soil temp is. Now the sun's been out a while, so the ground's gonna be warm. It's like the middle of the afternoon. I gotta check what time it is. It is 3.44, so yeah, sun's been out a while. We're gonna place this in the ground, spot with a little bit of residue. Three, four inches, don't break it off, Grant. Let's see what we get to. And while that's going, I'm gonna get the pickup truck hooked up to the seed tender, run that down. I think I'd be able to fill the boxes from here, and we should be able to fill the boxes and have enough seed, but I don't trust my math. I got a C in math in high school and college, so I, we're just gonna, we're, we're, we're not gonna risk it. And our soil temp is about 59, 60 degrees. That's actually not too bad. I was expecting a little less than that. Okay, so we're gonna run this down to the farm four miles away quick, because I know I'm gonna get stuck in a situation where I under... Gosh, darn it. Oh gosh. John, my pioneer seed salesman, if you're watching this, skip this part skip this part right here don't 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 watch this part oh somebody forgot to strap this to the top good thing we weren't going fast there's no way that's coming out of there now we should be good now there's just it was a janky little latch on there that uh, we didn't have latched. But no, I was gonna say, if you guys are new to the channel, um, so I'm Grant and then Spencer's also on this channel. I really need to call it Hilbert Farms or something like that instead of my just my name, I need to call it like Hilbert Farms. But he's actually working on his farm, finishing that. It's been too wet and we were out there last night for like two hours and we were like, oh, it's dry, we gotta go. So we were working uh, last night a little bit and then uh, he's clearing that all day. So throughout this video, you guys will probably see footage of him clearing the farm he just bought. And it's a rough farm, but he's gonna get it cleared and we're gonna plant that this spring still. Now I would show you guys some cool shot of like the neighbors going and planting and stuff like that, but nobody's out planting. So uh, that either means I'm the smartest farmer around here or the stupidest farmer. And with two years experience, I can almost guarantee I'm the stupidest farmer. Okay, we'll get this thing unhooked and then run back and grab the tractor. Oh, don't do that. There 
go. Okay, so if you guys look at all of that, well, eight acres. We got eight acres planted last Tuesday. I didn't film it because uh, Farm Credit came out and they were doing like an internal video for their employees to learn more about like beginning farmers. And so I did not uh, film that because we spent like an hour planting it and then they did like a four hour video and it took up all my time. So, but I was gonna plant this and I would have filmed it, but uh, this stuff was way too wet. So that's kind of the difference between no till, conventional till is if you don't hit that window and you only got like a day window to get it in and early beans, you're getting costed about three bucks a day of waiting, waiting, waiting to plant beans is what we kind of estimate about three bucks a day is what you're losing per acre if you're not getting these beans planted right now. So, okay, we're gonna get this planter fire, or planter fired up, tractor fired up. Let's go plant some beans. It's good. So it is looking like we're gonna get a little sprinkle here. I don't think it's gonna be enough to keep me from planting. So uh, we're gonna keep going here. Okay, we'll get the planter unfold and then back up. And it should, yeah, there should be no issue unloading with that without a truck hook up, hooked up to it, I think. There's a couple things on this planter I know I'm gonna have to adjust. The row cleaners. The row cleaners are gonna have to go deeper um, and then maybe our closing wheels. We'll see how much seed we got in here. There's a decent amount. But uh, we gotta fill it up. Oh, don't fall on me, Jack. How does a guy get that? Based on my math, we can plant 20, or we can plant 38 acres if all these boxes are totally full. We got about 25 acres left to plant here. So that means I need to fill them, I don't know, kind of in between half and three quarters full. If I was doing this back at the shed, I'd be a little more worried about not getting them out right. But if we run out, I can just refill quick right here. Okay, we're gonna move it over to the left side now. I didn't want to risk it. I don't think that tender could have reached all 12 rows and I can't move the tender, so we'll just go six and six. And then we're gonna go through and just put a little more down pressure on these. We'll play with these settings, see what works. I just think in no-till, it'd be better to go a little more down pressure. We should be good to go, but we got rain clouds coming in that way. I hope it doesn't hit us. We should be good, hopefully. And we're gonna get started planting some beans. It's definitely a little moist under there. Woo! Dang. Why aren't those sealing up better? Why isn't that? Ugh. I'm thinking we need to be a lot more aggressive with the row cleaners. There's spots where we can't clear this trash out. I thought I set them deep enough, but we need to go deeper. Like right here, these spots, they'll just drop beans. Most of the time they just drop beans along here. So we need to at least be clearing that trash out of the way. We need to set those deeper. As you can see, there's no dust or anything coming up on the planter. It is. It's not perfect plant conditions, that's for sure. Like what I'm doing here. But half of it is perfect plant conditions. This is right where the burn line is. Um, this stuff is planting fantastic, obviously. This stuff back here is not planting as good. Um, there's just a lot of, uh, 
there's just a lot of moisture under the sock still and we haven't had rain in three days and it's got like half an inch and it's holding moisture because it's been cold so i know this stuff's going to come up great uh, but that stuff i'm a little worried about we're going to get a rain tonight so it should be should be fine but we're, we are kind of on the borderline of what i call mudding it in uh, which isn't good but we're trying to get these beans in early beans we're losing three bucks an acre a day right now by not getting these beans in so it's important we get uh i don't know it's important we we get them planned get some beans in the ground okay so we got about half the field done and uh this is why it always takes me so long is because i'm always uh tweaking every little thing on the planter trying to get it perfect but um i adjusted these row cleaners a little deeper some would say they're probably aggressive but i want to have a black strip so we can get good warmth right in the row there so there's a couple spots where it's not cutting through the best this side is adjusted a little deeper than this six rows it's kind of tough to see but um it is ah there's like eight acres here corn stalks and it is it is too it is too muddy to be planting these but we are still Okay, I did my math a little incorrectly. We're actually running out. There's a little more acres to this field than I thought there was. Oh, is that, it's gonna be close. I kinda wanna run these out because I'm switching to different maturity beans on the next farm. So, it'd be nice to run these out. Okay, we are on our last pass here. It is 9.15 at night. This is why it takes me uh, so long, is because I keep tweaking the planter and trying to get the seed perfect. Sometimes you just gotta fill that thing full and go and just say screw it if there's some left over. Well, it is now a new day and I'm gonna start planting some more corn. We planted our first corn April 13th. It is April 27th. I think it's April 27th today. And so we're gonna plant uh, some more corn. We planted those beans that I finished on, it would've been two days ago, so we basically skipped today. And uh, now it's 72 degrees. We're gonna get a little cold this weekend. Uh, probably like, honestly, the lowest we're gonna get here is 40s is what I'm seeing. We got, we're starting to get really good soil temps. And so I think it's time to go and finish the rest of the corn off here. So we want to at least see 50 degrees for soil temps. This two to three inch soil temp is at over 60 degrees. It's about 61, 62. So we got good soil temps. We're going to get a little cold this weekend. It sh the soil should hold it. The highs this weekend are going to get into like the, the 55, 60. So I think we'll be able to hold enough where it won't cool the seed down too much. And we have to worry about like any type of chilling. I do need to... I play the game of switching over, switching back and forth all the time, but the dist up bean ground that I thought was gonna be ready doesn't, it needs one more pass, it's 18 acres I rent, and then also tonight we're gonna to work the corn on corn ground, which is about 75 acres that was chiseled last fall that needs leveled off, and there's gonna be some high residue areas that I wouldn't mind hitting twice with that, um, especially with the mulch finisher, I got time, I got all the time in the world tonight, so. We should be able to get that knocked out and then be ready to plant corn 100, 120 acres-ish tomorrow is what I'm planning for. Go work the rented ground real quick. It's like 20 acres, come back. I probably need a little fuel in the tractor before we go to the other piece and then work 70, 80 acres tonight of corn on corn ground. So there's really just a couple really cloddy spots across here and that's what we're trying to hit and they're kind of right at the top of hills um we got a rain on it so this should work up real nice and we should be able to plant it tomorrow we do not have the planter we need to switch that to the mulch finisher so this ground here is this is really mellow this is this is perfect you can plant this there's actually a little moisture i mean that would be awesome i'd plant right into this like this is butt 
we get into spots like these with chunks like this. So I'm hoping just one quick pass over it will break up these giant chunks out here. Cause like you can see all the giant chunks across here. So we'll just try and go shallow and break them up quick. Okay, we'll get her folded up and we're gonna put a little fuel in this thing and then head to the next farm. Oh, do not get any dirt in there. Okay, we got fuel, ready to rock and roll. Question for anybody who has tractors that get dirty like this. I mean, I think everybody's tractors do. How do you, do you clean off this cap or you just pull it off with all the dirt on it? And then just hope none of it falls in. Or do you clean it off every time and like... If you guys got any tips for that, let me know. Because one of these days, a big chunk of dust, if you want to call it dust, dirt, is going to fall in the fuel tank. I'm going to be... Uh, crying a little bit probably at some point i need to make this driveway a little bigger so this is the farm we pattern tiled me and spencer have honestly spencer's been putting a ton of work with the excavator but we have like put a lot of work into this farm to make it a lot better and so like literally this whole creek our yield was robbed along this whole creek spencer went in and cleaned all the trees all the trees along the fences are gone and then and all the wet spots and bottom ground, so about half the farm, more than half the farm, 60, 70% of the farm is pattern tiled on 30 foot spacing. Every farm has its own little story behind it, but this one has been put with a lot of work behind it. So it'll be interesting to see if we can pull a good yield out after this. I have this thing set maybe a bit shallow, so we're gonna go a little deeper because we are gonna have to run it deeper to level out the chisel plow ridges or the ripper, the ripper ridges that I created. I think that's gonna be good. I think we'll be good. So we're still going tonight. It's uh, like 1.15. I have like 10 acres left and I'm done. Okay, we are done. All right, so Grant's down, finishing 22 acres of the tile ground. I had just switched over to planter from soybeans to corn, switched out the meters and emptied out all the beans and stuff. So we, uh, we filled up the trash can. So I'm gonna switch, got it switched over now, adjusted the the gears and stuff. I'm gonna fill these up with the wiffles and and then pull it with the pickup down there to save five, 10 minutes. And uh, should, if I hurry up, should be there right when Grant's done, we'll detach the mulch finisher, hook up the planter, and then he'll get going. There's a chance of rain later today, so any time we can save is, is good. He stayed up till like two or three in the morning last night, finishing mulch, doing mulch finishing. So uh, we'll try and get planting here shortly. All the tongue weight on the truck I don't think we're I don't think we're ever gonna spin I have it in four-wheel drive just in case but there's so much uh, weight on those back tires all right because it's squatted so much I'm gonna do the same way I got it off I'm gonna reverse and then it should stand up we'll see
Now, the real test would be pulling that with my pickup truck. I think there's way less tongue weight, and I think overall it weighs more, so you might spin, but if I can't, I might just bring the military truck in just a couple miles, we'll see. Okay, so Spence is getting hooked up, the planner right now. I'm with uh, Kent, Kent came down, and uh, Kent works with Advanced Agrolytics, so he's helping me on like a lot of the agronomy side, because I, I really don't know that much, and his brain knows a lot, so he's gonna teach me a lot over the years, so. Uh, so we're gonna check some of this April 13th planned corn. Are you scared about it? Are you nervous? At this point today, I, I'm not really too concerned about it. Some of the stuff I've been digging across the state really just hasn't hasn't done much. You know, the things you're thinking about um, when you're out in the field and you're evaluating what we're gonna do here, you're kind of digging up every single row, making sure your seeding depth's good. You wanna look at maybe if you had a refuge hybrid, sometimes mm -hmm. there might be differences between the two, right? One might have a little better germination than the other, so then you can understand the stand differences. Okay. But our big goal here is always looking at the trench, making sure everything worked good, and then digging in and understanding, you know, did I have that good seed to soil contact? You're like even when we're looking out here, you know, were my row cleaners set right? Were they too mm -hmm. deep? Was I plowing? You know, those are all different things that we're looking at in the field, so that's what we're gonna dig into today. Okay. He's gonna give me a planting score. We'll see what we did out of 10. One thing, so we're kind of just digging in here, see where our seeding depth is, see if we find a plant. There we got one right there. It's like on this guy, right? I broke him off there a little bit. So we can see, as we dig that radical starting to come out, you have that next piece that's going heading towards the soil surface. And so we're understanding, if you want to look at it and understand if it's getting rotten or not, you can squeeze that seed a little bit to understand if it's still solid. So this seed's still really viable. You don't have any issues. You know, if, if it was going to stay cold and we were really worried about it, you know, you might start to see that start to turn. Like I've seen situations where the corn will actually be a little farther along than this, maybe it had more heat units. And then what will happen is the corn might start to leaf out on the ground or if you have crusting or something like that. So that's kind of the things we're, we're looking at here. The other thing, you know, for this guy, this specific seed, if you think about that seeding depth. It, you looked, know, it looked a little shallow. This one it? looked a little shallow, right? So we're, we're probably sub two inches. Now where you want to be careful, so like maybe when you work this, for example, you worked it and then you planted it. Yeah. Well, if you do it the same day, you could lose a half inch. So that soil will settle. Think about flour, right? Okay, you shake yeah. flour or oatmeal in something, it'll get that air in it and it'll settle back down. The soil will do the same thing. So we want to make sure if you're out there working ground and it's really fluffy, you need to set your depth deeper to make sure you're pushing through that settle. Think about that settling. Okay, so Kent's head back to the farm. I'm going to take the side by side. And uh, Kent's going to help kind of get this planter set. We're going to plant into some pretty tougher conditions with corn on corn there's always a lot more residue and it's important you really get that planter set in anything but especially corn on corn it's a little just a little more challenging so it'll be good to have a third opinion there So we're evaluating and we're right by, behind the planter here. So we're just double checking our how deep we are. And so this field was worked yesterday, right? Yep, yesterday, yep. yeah, last worked night. Worked yesterday, yep. so we had a little bit of uh, air settle overnight. But at this point, like if, if I dig this one up right here, you know, we're still, we're maybe two inches, not quite, right? We wanna make sure that seeds get into that bottom of that trench. So we're probably just right on that line. We could probably go a touch deeper if we wanted to, but we'll uh, we'll look at some other rows and just make sure we know what's going on here. I don't know. I mean, we could. Oh, that looks shallow. I'm you, at, I'm at under two inches I, there. I am too. Did we set? I'd it? say we. Some of our research, you know, what I've done in the past and some of my history, we we had some planning trials where, and so we're out here checking seeding depth, and so the seeding depth's critical in that crown formation of that that corn plant, and if you don't get your seeding depth there, you get floppy corn and all these things. We talked about that earlier, but a lot of this stuff we used to do research, and we'd get it at a Kinsey planter where I used to work, and we'd slam that thing max rate. As far as it'd go in the ground, we'd slam it in four inches. And to be honest with you, we'd lose maybe two to 3,000 in stand, but most of the time it would yield just as well. So we might have 28,000, but man, I had a huge root and I was deep. So I was drought tolerant. I had that plant where I needed it. And so the four inch was kind of variable. It kind of depended on how dry it was too when we wanted to get there. 
three inch was always really consistent. Two inch, you're not as consistent. And so our goal today is to really make sure we're getting past that two inches to make sure we're at two and a half. Because two inches, what happens there is you have a lot more weather variation, right? So we're gonna go into like a cold weekend. Well, if I have that corn slammed in at two and a half inches, it's like I have a nice blanket on top of it. Where if I'm at an inch and a half, the two inches, my temperature variation is so much more. So then my stand doesn't come up the same. And so when I have an uneven stand, I already lost yield because I want every corn plant to merge within 12 to 24 hours for maximum yield. So that's why we're out here making sure we're checking the depth to make sure we're getting the, getting the corn in the ground the first time. Right. Away. Okay, so we are out planting. I have 18 acres in the ground. And everything is going smoothly. Everything's working good. We're painting lines and uh, planters working good. We're planting at 33.8 for population. So 33,800 plants per acre. It's all working good down there. You'll see it's pretty rough because we have tile lines. You can see those black streaks, those are tile lines. So I'm, I should probably be driving a little slower, honestly, over these, but uh, you'll see them plow a big trench through them. It's kind of what we have to do, but we got them adjusted good. Our row cleaners are probably, they're pretty aggressive, but it's kind of what we have to do on a corn on corn situation. You kind of have to plow a little trench. So I think we're doing a pretty good job planting about two and a half inches deep. Um, so should work pretty good. We are rolling. Okay, so we are planting. We are racing the rain right now. There's rain coming in at seven o'clock, it's six o'clock. I can do about 15 acres an hour and we got 22 acres to do. Probably not the brightest, but we're gonna give her a shot because some of this ground takes forever to dry out and it's fairly dry right now. So we're gonna get this in because we got most of it done. We just need to finish the field. Okay, so Spencer's planting. I'm gonna do some digging. This is the plot that is the hardest to plant. It's, it sits the wet, the most wettest, um, and we pattern tiled it. And so I cannot screw this up. We have to have this perfect. And uh, we are plowing trenches a little bit, but we got a heavy residue area up there. So we'll see, making sure we're clearing the residue out. We have a little bit of sidewall compaction once you get to a certain layer, but it's not bad. It's like right there, right at the layer. So. I'm not too worried about everything else upwards is mellow and this is going to be like the driest period. You guys can see this is plowing like crazy, but this was a, a tile trench and so the ground's really, really mellow and so if you look out there. It's not plowing much, but right on the tile trench, we have like a giant hump. There's really no way to, to solve for that because eventually that row won't hit a tile trench and it won't clear the residue out as good. So like right here, these rows, we wanna make sure we're clearing all the residue out, which there's some residue in here. As long as we don't have seeds on top of the ground, they're all getting in there, we're fine. It's tough on corn on corn with the row cleaners because you have so much residue. You don't wanna plow trenches because the eventually once we get a big rain, it'll go over top of it that seed just has to take more energy to get through there but then at the same time you don't want you want to actually get the seed in the ground you don't want the seed on top of residue so it's it's kind of a perfect balancing game that we're trying to get down well guys we got planted last night and it's the next day now and we got a, a nice rain shower coming so that was kind of perfect timing so so far i have 18 more acres of the rented ground to plant that stuff's mellowed out that's going to plant nice 
and then we have 50 acres or 40 acres of beans to plant. And that's gonna be at the first farm I bought, that's gonna be no-till beans into corn stalks. So hopefully we don't get too much rain, otherwise that'll take a while to dry out. And then we have Spencer's farm to plant that way, which is up north, uh, and that's a 70, 80 mile drive with the tractor. We're gonna try and rent a field cultivator from a local guy around there that I know, and then we'll, uh, we'll plant that thing. So anyways, hopefully you guys enjoyed this video. Keep following along as we plant and stuff, and uh, thanks for watching, guys. Appreciate it.